cup of tea, Fathers. No, thanks, Mrs. Doyle. What do you think of her? Yeah, right. Are you sure you won't have a cup? It's a prize in our big raffle. Right, just the drop in your hand, then. Go on inside, Mrs. Doyle. I'll take the tray. All right, Father. I'll put the kettle on in case you want some more once you get in. Oh, God, Ted, look at that. There's a dent in the car. What? There's the dent. Just there, Ted. God, how did that happen? It must have been when you hit that fella on the bike. Don't let that anyone do. He was all right anyway. I saw him getting up. Not too bad. Sure, you can just straighten that out with the top of a hammer. Uh, have a look in that box over there. Whoops! I didn't mean to do that. I'll just tap it the other way. It's no use, Ted. You'll never get it absolutely right. I thought I had it there a while ago, you know. She's looking all right. I'm like a knee you to keep banging away. You're a perfectionist, Ted, you know. It's not too bad. <laughs> Let's have another look. No, no, we can't give that away as a prize. <laughs> look, Ted, why don't you sleep in it? See how you feel in the morning. Maybe you're right. probably needed that. <laughs> but uh, don't ever do it again. Now, what are we going to do? We could run away. <sighs> no, they just find us again. They always do. All right. All right. <laughs> what about that other fellow that has the car? Uh, the dancing priest? Finnegan. Yes, and it'll be the same type of car and everything. How could we get him to give it to us? Maybe... Maybe we could just get a lend of it. Ah, but when somebody wins it in the raffle, they won't want to give it back. Now, Dougal, this is going to sound very, very immoral, but um, stay with me. <laughs> what if... What if we organised the raffle so that we won it? Then we could bring the car back. Oh! <laughs> oh, that'd be terribly wrong, Ted. I don't think we should do that. It wouldn't be cheating, really. It would just... It would just be a case of structuring the raffle in such a way that the return comes to the benefactors rather than the beneficiaries. Mm hmm. Dougal, seriously, listen. If Bishop Brennan finds out that we wrecked the car, he will kill us. And murder is a terrible, terrible sin, Dougal. <laughs> so, by committing this little sin, we'll actually be saving a bishop's soul. <laughs> Fair enough, then, Ted. <laughs> Hello, Father Ted Crilly. Hello, Dick Byrne here. Dick. Well, Ted, are you entering this year? What? You're a song 96. <laughs> the young fellow's been driven mad here with it. Anyway, we thought we'd enter it this year. Why don't you give it a go as well? I'm sure you'd win it, Ted. Well, thanks very much. If but... all the other contestants were killed, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we'd do just as well as you would. No, you wouldn't. Yes, we 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 would. Yes, we would. Yes, we would. No, you wouldn't. Times thousand. Yes, Jinx, no comebacks. Dougal, get the guitar. I thought. I said get the guitar! Okay, right. What do we write it about? How about a lovely horse? OK, we'll call it My Lovely Horse by Father Ted Crilly. And uh, Father Dougal Maguire. <laughs> and uh, Father Dougal Maguire. <laughs> right, here we go. Um, will we do the lyrics first or will we do the music? Let's do the lyrics and then we can uh, fit the tune around it. Right, here we go.
Maybe we should do the music first. No, right, here we go. I like that. <laughs> was that all right? Yeah, it was a bit sad. <laughs> good, good. Uh, I'll write it down. Um, I think it was a, an A minor. I, th I think, I think, I, I think I have a lyric. Right, lyrics. Go ahead there, Dougal. What's it called again? <laughs> my lovely horse. Right, how about this? Um, my lovely horse, I want to hold you so tight. I want to rub my fingers through your tail and <laughs> love you all night. Dougal, 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 stop there. Uh, we want to keep out of the whole area of actually being in love with the horse. Oh, right. right. It's more that we're friends with the horse, that we want to jump around with it and, you know, just have a good laugh with it. Right. What about something like, uh, take this lump of sugar, baby, you know you want it. <laughs> That'd be something like those rap fellas at right. You can forget about them, Dougal. You can forget about ICT and, and Scoopy Scoopy Dog Dog. <laughs> They're no help to us now. Anyway, we're not moving from here until we finish the song. Ready? Ready, Ted. Let's do it. Dougal, <laughs> don't take it so seriously. It's, it's just a bit of fun. <laughs> just play the f***ing note. The first one. No, not the f***ing first one. The f***ing first one's already f***ing down. Just play the f***ing notes of playing earlier. I've been playing the first one. We have the first one. So I just just play the f***ing notes of playing there. The you were just doing. Play the notes. <laughs> Right. <laughs> My lovely horse running through the field. Where are you going with your fetlocks blowing in the wind? I want to shower you with sugar lumps and ride you over fences. I want to polish your hooves every single day and bring you to the horse. <laughs> My lovely horse, you're a pony no more. <laughs> Running around with a man on your back like a train in the night. Wait, wait, I can do this bit. Like a train in the night. <laughs> well, um, what do you think in general? <laughs> right. Facilities are unavailable. That's a, a reminder of the unavailability of parking facilities. I know the bloody thing was on here. Hello, Father. Hello, Tom. <laughs> Tell your lads, uh, did you get them here all right? I did, yeah. They're going to film a bit of the island first. They'll be back soon. Right, so. I'll just wait in the field, so. <laughs> Father. Yes, Tom. I've killed a man. Thank you, Tom. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll have to talk to you about that later. I'm doing an interview for the television. <laughs> <laughs> the child has now been found. Thank you. Like fat, smelly cow. Tittle You have a face like a pair of tits. Well, at least that's one pair between us. <laughs> hello, Mary. Ah, hello, Father. Hello, John. Did you have a pack of tothos, Father? No, thanks. I have to meet someone now. Actually, I'm going to be interviewed for a television programme. Oh, really? Oh, that's fantastic. You know, Father... I think you'd be brilliant on television. <laughs> well, thank you. Oh, I'd say you'd be more than a match for Gay Borden or Terry Wogan or any of them. <laughs> it's going to take me a few weeks to get to their level. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have to go now. I'm trying to track down this film unit, and uh, they'll probably want to do a few close-ups and master shots and noddies and that sort of thing. And I don't want to be late on set, get a reputation as a sort of Marilyn Monroe type. See you soon. <laughs> Look, Father Ted. Get them feckin' crunchies out of the car. <laughs> Hey, 
Ken! What are you doing here anyway? I thought you weren't interested in this type of thing. You're supposed to be taking Jack for his walk. Well, um, are the cliffs were closed for the day. How would the cliffs be closed, Dougal? Okay, no, it wasn't that. They were gone. <laughs> the cliffs were gone. How could they just disappear? <laughs> Erosion. Come on off that and straight to the cliffs with you. Uh, there's just another couple of turns to go, I think. Look. <coughs> Straight home, do you hear? <laughs> I don't want to hear any more nonsense. Everyone else is here. Dougal, you're a priest. You're supposed to show some decorum. I wish I wasn't a priest. What? I wish I wasn't a priest. Dougal! Jack heard you say that. So he told me one time he doesn't even believe in God. Dougal! <laughs> Dougal, look. Chinese, if you please. Oh, no, no. Come on, Dougal, lighten up. <laughs> Dougal, there were Chinese people there. All right, yeah. I mean, what, what is, I mean... That's the Yin family. They're living over there in that old Chinatown area. <laughs> Chinatown area? There's a Chinatown on Craggy Island? Dougal, I wouldn't have done a Chinaman impression if I'd known there was going to be a Chinaman there to see me doing a Chinaman impression. Why not, Ted? <laughs> because, because it's racist. They'll think I'm a racist. I'm going to have to catch up with them and explain I'm not a racist. Hello there, Father. Uh, hello, Colm. <laughs> Out and about. I am. Same as yourself. Good, good. I hear you're a racist now, Father. <laughs> what? What? How did you get interested in that type of thing? Who said I'm a racist? Everyone's saying it, Father. Should we all be racist now? What's the official line the church is taking on this? No, no. Only the farm takes up most of the day, and at night I just like a cup of tea. I might be able to devote myself full time to the old racism. Good for you, Father. What? Oh, Mrs. Carberry. <laughs> Good for you, Father. Well, someone has a guts to stand up to them at last. Coming over here, taking our jobs and our women, and acting like they own a second place. Well done, Father. Good for you. Good for you! I'd like to Greeks! It isn't the Greeks, it's the Chinese he's after! I am not after the Chinese! I don't care who he gets so long as I can have a go at the Greeks! They invented gayness! Look, we are not having a go at anybody! I am not a racist, all right? God! Fagging Greeks! How's Mary? She's fine. She got that job after. Great! <laughs> ah, there we go. Ah, it's dark. <laughs> How did you sleep? Oh, like a log. It's so peaceful here. God, I need a bit of peace after the year I've had. <laughs> I see. I've had a rough time of it recently, Father. My husband left me for another woman. Oh, it was my fault, I suppose. The sex was getting a little boring and I did nothing to spice it up. <laughs> Isn't that always the way? <laughs> but near the end, I tried a few things. I used to dress up in really revealing lingerie and when he came through the door, I leapt on top of him and had sex right there in the hall. <laughs> so you had a good sleep then? <laughs> Oh, God, I'm sorry, Father. I've probably shocked you. <laughs> go, go away with you. I've heard far more shocking things down through the years in confession. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever think about the 
future, Father. Oh, I used to think about it, the future, and then it became the present, so I, uh, <laughs> I thought about it quite often then, and then it was in the past, so I, I didn't think about it that much. Do you like Dostoevsky? Oh, him, yes, yes. He's, uh, he's one of my favourites. I, I must have read that book for ten times. <laughs> I see you're reading it again. There's a bookmark here on page seven. <laughs> Did you feel his sense of commitment wane towards the end? Yes. <laughs> when did you feel that began to happen? Oh, towards the end, you know. <laughs> After he'd finished writing about the crime bit and moved on to the punishment, you know. <laughs> felt it dragged a bit there for me. You know. <laughs> I always thought that if Joyce... Keats and Lawrence were sitting in a room together and Dostoevsky walked in. <laughs> There'd be a hell of a fight for the last piece of pudding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, it's great to talk to somebody about these things. <laughs> My husband. There was a man who was really afraid of Virginia Woolf. <laughs> well, why was... Was she following or something? <laughs> like to come up to the cottage later for a little drink or maybe some more book talk that would be delightful sorry <laughs> i'd be delighted at it <laughs> i'll see you later then father about seven seven o'clock <sighs> seven right <laughs> it's only a drink Ted, shall we watch the sports video? Oh, oh yes. Come on, Ted. Ah, oh, here's the lads. And away they go. Oh, no. <laughs> look at your man at the back. Oh, oh, no. oh, this is oh here's the big I job. I remember this. Oh, okay. Oh, 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 look at Mrs. Dial. Oh. Doesn't she look crazy on the telly? She's wearing the hat full of bet. <laughs> I'd say so. Oh, here's Buck and Bronco. Oh. <laughs> I'll hop along, Cassidy. <laughs> oh, here's the champ. Ah, he, oh, no, no. Fair play. Fair, oh, fair play to him. Well. Fair play to him. <laughs> what are we watching? We're looking at the sports day. Lots of young fellas running around in shorts. That's the kind of thing you like looking at. And I bet you like that, too. Well, you're probably imagining what they'd look like without shorts. You're sitting there imagining that with a big smile on your face, you dirty fecker. <laughs> Father Stack, if you're trying to embarrass us, you're not succeeding. Yes, I am. <laughs> well, I have to say, I think that you're a very rude man. If you ever say that to me again, I'll put your head through the wall. Dougal, where did you go to? Ted, how are you? <laughs> Dougal, what the... Guess what, Ted? What? What? Dougal, have you been drinking? I have, Ted. I've been drinking like a mad idiot. <laughs> no, no, wait, wait. <laughs> No, I haven't. <laughs> Dougal, I'm ashamed of you. Ted, 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 Ted. Come here, Teddy, Teddington. You're my best friend. God, I love being a priest. <laughs> We're all going to heaven, lads. Way. Perhaps I should explain. Your little friend and I were enjoying ourselves with a bottle of whiskey I found upstairs. Oh, well, that is the last straw. I'm driving. I'm driving home. I'm perfectly careful. By the way, I got the keys of your car and I drove it into a big wall. If you don't like it, tough. I had my fun and that's all that matters. Ted, I can see up your trousers. Right, well, that's it. I thought giving alcohol to Dougal was the last straw, but I must have been wrong. It must have only been the second last straw because this is definitely the last bit of straw left in the, the, the thing. Basically, what I'm saying is there is no more straw left. Ted, it's a little late. Yes, I, I really think we should go. No, you don't have to go. I think we should. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, girls. 
pair of wankers. Oh, right. That's it. That's good. Come on, dude. I think we've had quite enough of Father Stack's company for one evening. To the Pope, then. <laughs> God, I'm looking forward to this. Whoa! Ah! <laughs> hey, guess what she's replaced my mattress with? <laughs> oh, oh, that's it. That's it. She's obviously insane, Dugan. We've got to get out of here. Where do we go? No problem. We know loads of people. What about Mwengwe? His parents are away for the weekend and he's got the whole house free and he's got satellite. Dougal, he lives in Addis Ababa. <laughs> what about Dick Byrne, then? No, no, I'm not ringing Dick Byrne. I know. I'll call Father Larry Duff. He'll put us up for a while. Oh. oh, wait a second. No, he told me not to call tonight. He's got this big important thing on. I suppose it'll have to be Father Dick Byrne, so over on Rugged Island. Come on. I'll leave her a note saying we've gone to a funeral or something. Or an autopsy. Why don't we say we had to go to an autopsy instead? <laughs> That'll be more exciting. No, Dougal. A funeral is more believable. All right. Now, listen. We've got to do this as quietly as possible, OK? Right. And don't suddenly panic or make a noise. If we take it easy, we won't wake her. God, what a dump. <laughs> They're probably asleep. I'll just knock very gently on the door. All right, yeah. So as you won't wake them up? Uh, no, I'll have to wake them up so they can let us in. Well, then shouldn't you just knock loudly? Right. Good point. <laughs> Ted, maybe they're not home. No, I definitely heard something. <laughs> I should have known, I should have seen it. You just can't trust Dick Byrne. As priests go, he's a really bad priest. Yeah. And we've still got 38 days of Lent to go. I know. Um, <laughs> this isn't what it looks like. <laughs> well, uh, this certainly puts a, a different spin on things. Uh, you won't tell anyone, will you, Father? I couldn't help it. They were just so chocolatey. And, uh, and I can't go back to the other nuns until after Easter. Oh, God, please don't tell them that I gave in to temptation. She's been eating chocolate! <laughs> oh, God, please, Father. You must be so disappointed in me. If there's anything I can do to make it up. <laughs> well, uh, here's a mad idea. <laughs> Hello, sister. How can I help you? working now, Ted. <laughs> it's broken again. 
Maybe it only works when my head is in it. <laughs> Ted, we should call the plumber. No, no, I don't want to get them involved. <laughs> Anyhow, I'd be too embarrassed to tell them how I broke it in the first place, you know, trying to give it an extra hard flush. <laughs> well, now, Ted, I have to say it was fine for me. It was a good, powerful flush, I thought. Yeah. I was thinking more about Jack. You know what it's like when he's involved. You want to get that stuff away as fast and as hard as possible. <laughs> Best thing would be for us to flush it here and have it pop up somewhere in Sierra Leone. <laughs> oh, you're right there, Ted. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <clears throat> uh. <laughs> I thought Jack had stashed something in here. <sighs> OK. Let's try it now. Bloody hell. Good news, Ted. No. <laughs> very, very bad news. It's the Holy Stone of Clon Rickard. They're going to upgrade it to a Class II relic. Great! No, it's not great. It means they'll be sending over a few bishops to do a ceremony. And you know what they're like. We'll have to be on our best behaviour. I thought there was something up with the Holy Stone, all right. Wasn't someone cured there? No, someone was lured there. <laughs> short and then those fellas started to beat him with the sticks oh that was it yeah the holy stone it must be even holier than we thought perhaps it's something to do with that fella from england last year he touched it and he grew a beard wow <laughs> that's weird that'd be nearly enough to upgrade it to a class one. Oh, class one would be very rare dougal that would be bringing people back to life time travel cloning dinosaurs <laughs> very rare but there must be millions of relics all over the world. How do they know which ones to do? Well, there's all these things they have to think about. The history of the relic, how many miracles can be attributed to it. All sorts of considerations go into a decision like that. What about the Holy Stone of Con Rickard? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> ah, come on, Ted, cheer up. It may never happen. Well, it is happening. They're definitely coming. All right, yeah. But who cares anyway? I mean, they come in, they strip down the wallpaper, they fumigate the place and they're gone. What's so bad about that? <laughs> Dougal, they're bishops. Oh, right, yes. <laughs> Dougal, what is this confusion you have about bishops? Do you actually understand what they actually do? <laughs> Nothing to do with fumigating houses or anything like that at all. <laughs> have you got that? Got it. Anyway, Ted, let's play a game. Get your mind off it. Chess or buckaroo? Uh, <laughs> actually, I wouldn't mind a game of the old chess today myself. Really? Oh. No, only joking, Ted. Buckaroo. <laughs> but only if you're ready for a good trashing. Dougal, you've never actually beaten me, ever. All right, yeah. <laughs> Still, eh? Buckaroo, the sport of kings. <laughs> I suppose it won't be so bad. The bishops will have a look around and see that we're a normal, everyday parish and go away. Nothing to worry about at all. <laughs> uh, hello, Len. Don't call me Len, I'm a bishop. <laughs> Yes, Dougal. Uh, your grace is more appropriate. Oh, your grace. Right. Hello. Anyway, uh, yet again, I am dragged away from my warm fireside to come and deal with the cast of Police Academy. <laughs> <laughs> you behave yourself now, Jack. You're listening to me, Jack. No! Oh, would you like a drink, your grace? I have a small one, please. Thank you. <laughs> Just, uh, would you like ice with it? Uh, a drop of soda. I'll just get the glasses. <laughs> hey, come on! <laughs> <laughs> to your grace. Time for Ginny Poos. <laughs> oh, thanks very much, Mrs. Doyle. That'll be grand. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh, there you are, Bishop Brennan. I thought I should tell you, your car is parked outside. Yes, I know it is. I parked it there myself. <laughs> The tyre?
hairs look a bit flat, I could give them a bit of a blow up for you at the pump. No. What kind of air do you normally put in them? We have ordinary, or well, that's all we have actually. <laughs> and if you're looking for the wipers, I have them in the kitchen. What? <laughs> they look like they needed a little wash. The only trouble is, I broke the side window while I was snapping them off. Leave my car alone and don't touch it again. Just one question, Your Grace. Is your car diesel or petrol? Leave it alone, Mrs. Doyle. Oh, no, 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 no. This is just curiosity, Your Grace. Diesel if or... If diesel is diesel! Right. So it's not petrol. No, it's not petrol. Right. So it would do a terrible amount of damage if I put petrol in. Yes, it would. It will completely ruin the car's engine. Well, <laughs> I certainly won't be doing that then. <laughs> I suppose you must clock up a fair old mileage every year going round the diocese, you know. <laughs> doing the old uh, bishop sort of really, really. Where and... is my room? Well, um, yours is the spare room, Your Grace. It's the first on the right. Uh huh. Uh, this lettuce. Oh, no, thanks. I've already had some. You, you take it. <laughs> no, Crilly, no, Crilly, like Crilly, I mean this lettuce. Where did it come from? You, you don't have rabbits, do you? No, of course no. Because, you see, I don't like them at all. I had an experience once with someone. It wasn't very nice. They got into a lift with me and they started to nibble at my cape and, and everything. It was... Well, you've absolutely nothing to worry about, Your Grace. <laughs> no, that's just where we, um, where we grow the lettuce. <laughs> You, you grow lettuce indoors in a cage. Yes, it's safer, you know. Um, no one can steal it and, uh, well, you know, it, it, it brightens up the room. Uh-huh. Hmm. Um, Crilly, what is this? <laughs> That's, um, caviar. <laughs> caviar. <laughs> Yes, well, it's not every day we have a bishop around, so we thought we'd get the caviar out. <laughs> right, so what you have done is you have spread some caviar down there so I can get down on my hands and knees and eat off the floor. Yes. <laughs> what do you think I am, Crilly, a pony? <laughs> I'm going to my bed. Where did you put them, Dougal? The bunnies? Uh -huh. <laughs> Somewhere really safe, Ted. Where'd that be? Guess. It's almost like the type of place you wouldn't even think of. <laughs> God, uh, I don't know. Oh, that small room behind the kitchen. The coal cellar. I've got it. The shed. No, it's not the shed. Come on, Ted, think about it. Where's the last place you'd think I'd put them? <laughs> I suppose the last place I'd think you'd, you'd put them would be... Um, would actually be <laughs> Bishop Brennan's room. Bingo! <laughs> Think about it, Ted. I put the bunnies in the last place he'd ever expect to find them in his own room. He'd never look there. <laughs> Your face! Your face! <laughs> Right, Dougal, come on, you can't sit watching television all night. It's a big waste. Chewing gum for the eyes. Uh, no thanks, Ted. <laughs> anyway, I've got these crisps here. Look, Ted, this is what I do. I get a cheese and onion one and a salt and vinegar one and I eat them in the same go. <laughs> that leak is getting worse, Dougal. I think we'll have to move himself and put that bucket under it. Right, fair enough, Ted. Camper! <laughs> God almighty, that's going to cost a fortune to fix. Where are we going to get the money? Think, Dougal, how can we raise some money? Mm. Yes, mm. I know. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I think so, Ted. Yes! <laughs> but now, wait, I'm not sure. <laughs> what? I mean, it is a big step, and uh, where are we going to get the guns? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, wait a minute now. Actually, I, I might have been thinking about something different. <laughs> you thought we were going to rob a bank, didn't you? I did, yeah. 
Elder Rule, this isn't a Bruce Willis film. I was thinking more along the lines of a raffle. What do we have as a prize, though? You've got me there, Ted. I think we can get something. Under the rules of the diocese, we're allowed a raffle prize every couple of years. It's not, Ted. <laughs> Look, we have to move them out of here. Uh, where's the thing? The thing for waking them up. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Father! Father, it's only us! Get your feck! Come on, Father, we're going to have to move you again. Drink! <laughs> Don't drink that, Father. No! It's fakin' water! <laughs> and I've been looking up the records, and the island hasn't been given anything to raffle since those two bags of coal in 1964. Uh, I think we're entitled, uh, under the rules of the diocese... <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you very much, Your Grace. Yes, thanks again. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, bye, Bishop Brennan. Bye. <laughs> no luck, then. <laughs> Lots of luck, Dougal. We're being given a car. A car? That's a brilliant prize, Ted. Oh, it's not that unusual. Father Finnegan got one last year. You know him, don't you, Dougal? The dancing priest. Dances for peace. Oh, yeah. Is he still going? Oh, yes, indeed. He danced across America last year. New York to Los Angeles. He was mugged about once every 15 miles. <laughs> Great! We'll have the roof sorted out in no time. Did you hear that, Father? <laughs> you haven't told me your name yet, Father. Him? Be yourself. Right. Uh. Father Dougal Maguire. All right. This is a great house. I really love the crude religious imagery. Yes, I like it. Are you all right there? <laughs> How's your bra? What? Your bra. Is it comfortable? <laughs> Do you have a bra? <laughs> it's not too tight, is it? Because <laughs> you can loosen it if you want. <laughs> Take it off, sure. Go on. Or would you like some tea? I'll tell you what, I'll make the tea and you take your brow. <laughs> oh, I... Isn't that Bob Geldof there? No, it isn't. Hold a second. It is, you know. He's looking a bit rough. I should have lost all his money in that Louis Vuitton thing. Well, I'm not sure if it is Bob Geldof. Hang on there a second. Excuse me, are you... Back off! <laughs> it's himself, all right. <laughs> and now... Walking. Oh. Look at them there, walking around. Oh. Look out there, Mary. Doesn't Mary have a lovely bottom? <laughs> Careful there, Ted. That might offend the girls. Rightly. Of course, they all have lovely bottoms. <laughs> Actually, um, Mrs Doyle is the one who makes the tea and she's out. <laughs> make the tea. But uh, Mrs Doyle makes the tea. <laughs> anyway, I'd better just tell you the reason I'm here. I'm looking for a house around the area and I really, really like this one. <laughs> I'm sorry, Joan. Your sandwich exceeds the required six centimetres in width and that means it's between Amelda and Mary in the lovely laugh tiebreak. <laughs> In order to hear your lovely laugh, I'll have to tell you a joke. So here we go. This is my Robin Williams impression. OK, here we go. This is the joke now, OK? Secretary. Sir, the invisible man is in reception. Got that? Boss, tell him I can't see him. <laughs> I think I have to say Amelda's laugh is nicer. I'm sorry, Mary. That means Amelda is the winner. <laughs> Your certificate of loveliness, and of course you'll be going to dinner tomorrow in Craggy Island's top seafood restaurant, the Thai Cottage. And uh, who will you be inviting to dinner? I'll be bringing my mother. Okay, just have another go at that, Amanda. <laughs> oh, yes, I'll be inviting you, Father. Yes, you will. And you'll be paying. It's not me. It's not me who pays. 
So there she is, the winner of our lovely girl 1996. It's Imelda. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, Ted. How did the lovely girls' competition go? Brilliantly well, and as is the tradition, I get a free dinner tomorrow night. Great. Is Jack with you? Oh, God, Jack. Wow. You really knocked Michael Hutchins unconscious. I battered him! <laughs> anyway, anything happened while I was away? No, nope, can't think of anything anyway. Oh, you won uh, Neve Connolly called. Neve Connolly? What did you say to her? Oh, don't worry, Ted. It was fine. I just took your advice about talking to girls and it was grand. She's upstairs now. Sh she's still here? Yeah, actually, I think she's in the toilet. Oh, hello again. Um, I was just telling Ted you were in the toilet. <laughs> Hello there, uh, Father Ted Crilly. You must be Miss Connolly. Oh, I suppose that's sexist now to call a young lady Miss. I'm sorry, it's too late for me to change my ways. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> well, it's it's getting kind of late. All right, well I, I won't keep you. Bye, so. Bye. Goodbye, Father. Yes, goodbye. <laughs> oh, Ted, uh, that's the other thing. I I sold Neve the house. What? Actually, I, I just gave it to her. <laughs> what? You... Wait a minute! Neve's going to turn it into a studio. She said we can have all the recording time we want. Wait now, wait now. You gave her the house. I mean, how... Ted, wait a second. Where are we going to live? Uh, is the television broken again, Father? Yes, we Never had a bit of trouble with... Never you mind. There's nothing wrong with it that can't be fixed with a bit of you-know-what in the head department. Now then, who's for tea? Uh, me, please, Mrs. Doyle. Tea! Thick! <laughs> I'm fine, Mrs. Doyle. You won't have a cup. Ah, uh, no, thanks, Mrs. Doyle. Honestly, I won't have a cup. Are you sure now it's hot? Uh, no, I'm not in the mood, thanks. <laughs> All right, so. I go on, would you not have a drop? No, thanks anyway, Just Mrs. Doyle. Cup. I'm fine. I no, really. I'll tell you what, Father. I'll pour Seriously. a cup for you. Ah! And you can have it if you want. No. And what do you say to a cup? Take off, cup! <laughs> he loves his cup of tea. Take off! There you go. Take off! Come on, come on. God, why do nuns have such awful music when you're on hold? <laughs> if I hear Ave Maria one more time, I don't know. Excuse me! She'll be with you in a second, Father. Ave Maria. Hello, Sister Mary Gondola. How can I help you? Uh, hello. Uh, my name is uh, Father Ted Crilly. Uh, look, I was wondering, could you send somebody out? We have a small problem here, uh, keeping our Lenten vows. What do you wish to give up, exactly? Well, um, cigarettes, alcohol and, um, rollerblading. All right. On special offer this month, we have the Lenten package. £150, plus that, plus booking fee, that's £200. £200? I'm not trying to buy cocaine. <laughs> we have a basic offer at £50. Ah, yes, that'll do fine, thanks. Now, how do you wish to pay? We accept all major credit cards. Can you hold, please, Father? Ave Marie. Listen, I'll, I'll have to ring you back. What's up with him, Ted? <laughs> it looks like the last of the alcohol has left his system. I think he might actually be sober. Is that it, Father? Are you seeing things as they really are at last? Oh, my God! <laughs> That's it, all right. I suppose sobriety for Father Jack must be sort of like taking some mad hallucinogenic. Where are the other two? <laughs> The other two. <laughs> ah, I see. The old vision is back to normal. No, there's just the two of us, Father. And what do you two do, then? We're priests. What? Priests? Don't tell me I'm still on that feckin' island! <laughs> well, well, yes, yes, Father. Uh, how do you feel? Uh, must be great to be sober every once in a while, or even every 12 years. <laughs> 
Well done, Father. <laughs> Curtains! Yes, that's right! Floor! <laughs> All coming back to you, is it, Father? Gobshite! <laughs> yes! I remember! I remember! God, Ted, it's weird, isn't it? The way you get used to something. I mean, it seems like only yesterday that he was here shouting at us and drinking his head off. Dougal, it was yesterday. <laughs> yeah, but you know, that's why I said it seemed like yesterday. Right, because it was yesterday. Yeah. Anyway, what time are Father Rory and Father Ken coming on Wednesday? About six. Six o'clock? <laughs> yes. Right. Good, good. Actually, it's just as well Jack's not here. He can get very irritable around strangers. That was the thing about Jack. Very bad around strangers. And people he knew. <laughs> yes, very bad around strangers and people he knew. <laughs> anyway, night, Dougal. Night, Ted. <sighs> oh, damn. <sighs> oh. <laughs> no, no, Dougal, it's not morning. I just switched on the light again to wind the clock. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that, Ted. Hello there, uh, Father... Uh, Father... Who are you? Who are you? Ah, Father Ted Crilly. Very pleased to meet you. Oh. <laughs> What's this? Oh, I see. It's from the bishop. Right. Ah, I see. You're taking Father Jack's place. <laughs> well, this is a surprise. Has Mrs Doyle shown you around the house? Well, anyway, welcome to Craggy Island. The meals are at 11, 1, half 2, 3, 5, 7 and 9. And if you ever want a quick snacker, uh, you can just ask Mrs Doyle there. No, uh, no, actually, that, that's, that's actually mine. Well, you, you go ahead there and have it anyway. <laughs> uh, Dougal, uh, this is uh, Father Finton Stack. He'll be staying with us now that Father Jack's gone. All right, uh, this is the brains of the operation. Uh, no, that'll be Ted. <laughs> I want to listen to some music. Oh, go ahead there. I wasn't asking for permission. So, um, what do you think of Father Stack? Well, um... It says in uh, his note from the bishop that they, um, they never really found a suitable parish for him. He's not a very nice man, is he? God, Ted, I've never met anyone like him anyway. Who would he be like? Hitler or one of those mad fellas? <laughs> oh, worse than Hitler. You wouldn't find Hitler playing jungle music at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> God, he, he almost makes Jack seem normal. <laughs> you know, he nearly does. <laughs> right, carry on. <laughs> what I was going to say is, you'd almost sort of miss Father Jack, wouldn't you? He had his funny little ways. But you know, whenever he'd hit you or whatever, he'd never do it out of spite. He'd only do it because, you know, he, he thought it was funny or whatever. <laughs> I suppose when you think about it now, it, it was sort of funny, wasn't it, Ted? <laughs> <laughs> Remember that time he gave you a big kick up the B-O-T-T-Y? <laughs> <laughs> and do you remember, Ted, do you remember when you were uh, bending over him? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and he oh. held your nose uh, so tight that you had to open your mouth and then he dropped a big spider in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that wasn't funny, Dugan. <laughs> It was funny when he kicked you up the arse. <laughs> it wasn't funny when he put the spider in my mouth. That was Ted. No, it wasn't Dougal. <laughs> ah, Ted. Dougal! Anyway, he's gone now. 
It's funny how you, you know, you miss someone's little ways. Not really, no. Tell you what, maybe I'll give Larry Duff a call. He developed a fear of flying after all those crashes he was in. He went to a hypnotherapist to cure it. Told me I could give him a call any time I was feeling nervous. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. Oh, what was that? Oh, uh, just a bit of turbulence. God, I wish I wasn't so nervous. You know, Larry told me once, you've more chance of being trampled by a herd of stampeding donkeys than you have of being killed in a plane crash. He's not picking up. <laughs> Ted! <laughs> oh, Father Fay, you know. Oh, hi. Ah, yes, it's very good. <laughs> oh, I am a, a very big fan of his, all right. Or should I say, oh, why? <laughs> no, uh, there's no mention of it so far. <laughs> oh, God, Teddy has been driven mad. You want me to take him up to see the cock? Ah! Ah! Cockpit, Ted. Ah, Ted, can I have a look too? Well, Dougal, and look at the Oh, God! What are you up to now? Please stop! Oh, God! Look, he's going mad with excitement. I better go. Coming further. Great. Dougal, don't touch anything. We don't want an action replay of the ceiling incident. All right, fair enough, Ted. <laughs> Oh, there you are, Father. You wanted the official tour. Oh, God, yes. He's been talking about nothing else all day. Will you calm down, you little monkey man? Well, basically, these are the main controls. Over here, we have the gauges for engines one, two, and three. <laughs> if you'd ever been in a cockpit before. No, but I, I was on the bridge of a ceiling ferry once, and it was funny, but I was looking at the controls, and... Uh, <coughs> oh, uh, nothing happened at all. <laughs> right. That's it. <laughs> hey, come on now. What's so funny? What's so funny? Just come on now. The joke's over. Uh, who are you? What do you mean, who am I? You blind? I'm the man you've been pelting with pieces of rolled-up paper for the whole journey. But I have not. Oh, right, well, why are you laughing, then? What's the big laugh about? I'm listening to comedy on these. It's Mr. Bean. Oh, right. <laughs> and yes, I am blind, as a matter of fact. <laughs> is this since birth, or is it a more recent thing, do you know? Since birth. Right, that's very interesting, but I... I suppose your other senses make up for it. I hear that with blind people there, their other senses become more alert, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> I suppose you can smell things from ten miles away and uh, you hear things before they happen. <laughs> no. <laughs> no sixth sense of any kind. Uh, or I suppose in your case it'd be a fifth sense, seeing as you've only got the four. <laughs> Unless there's another one missing that I don't know about. <laughs> How's your sense of touch? <laughs> Could you go away now, please? <laughs> yes, I might. Do just that. Good morning, fathers. Breakfast in five minutes. God Almighty! What was, what was that thing? 
Is, is there a fire? Is there a fire in the house? I suppose it's just time to get up. <laughs> it's... it's 5 a.m. Look, Dougal. 5 a.m. God, I've never seen a clock at 5 a.m. before. <laughs> <laughs> She's obviously made a mistake. Let's just go back to bed. Fair enough, Ted. What are you doing? I'm just writing her a note to tell her that we don't usually get up till later. Oh, <laughs> good figure in Ted. Oh, I don't know. A bit of breakfast and I suppose we'll be fine. God, I hope so, Ted. <laughs> uh, sister, somebody, you know, we really are only down for the basic booze, fags and rollerblading deal. I mean, the getting up early thing, it, it's great, but... Uh, this is water. That's right, Father. All right, all right. Having a bit of a laugh with the big tickles from the island. Where's our real breakfast? Ted, I'd love a Pop-Tart. <laughs> Yes, Father Dougal likes his Pop-Tarts first thing in the morning. I really don't think Pop-Tarts have any place in our Lord's plan for the world. I think they have as much a place as anything else. Maybe our Lord doesn't take a personal interest in them, but I'm sure he delegates it to someone almost as important. And what about Frosties? Again, the same thing. He mightn't have come up with the idea, but he'd be the one who'd give them the green light. All oh, right. But if you take something like, say, Sugar Puffs now, or Lucky Charms, now they'd be my favorite. Fathers, could you please... <clears throat> could you please stop having that conversation? Just finish your breakfast and come outside for your daily punishment. Fair enough, so. So as we'll just finish the... D daily what? I'm sorry, daily, what did you say there? Your daily punishment. Matty Hislop's ten-step programme to ridding herself of your pride. The single greatest obstacle to inner fulfilment. Oh, that uh, sounds... sounds great. <laughs> How are we two doing? F -f Fine, thanks. More ice? No, no, actually, I might enjoy that too much. Very refreshing, the old ice. Soon we'll be able to begin the ten steps. What? This isn't the first one. There's still ten to go. Father, of course. And this is just to cleanse you. A form of preparation. For what? Are we going into space? I can't feel my legs! Oh, God, still ten to go. Hopefully it'll just evolve a bit of an old prey. 